looking at the benefit of a kingdom fast or the benefit of self-denial, part two, the benefit, benefit of self-denial, part two. Now, it's very important for us to remind ourselves that what we're looking at is in the scriptures. We are not talking about things we do not have evidence. The evidence of scripture is plenteous. If you want to go by the way of the word, you will see that there was nobody that truly fasted, denied themselves of some privileges, especially food and water, and to study the word and to be a blessing that never, that came back without a testimony. Now, what are some of the testimonies that resulted from these individuals denying themselves or self-denial or kingdom fast. Number one, remember this is part two. Number one in part two is kingdom fast has benefits now in this life and in the life to come. First Timothy chapter four, verse eight says bodily exercise. When you go to the gym, you come back looking fit in the physical. You look stronger. You can handle a lot of challenges with your physical body when you do what? When you train your body physically. But then it goes ahead to say something profound. I mean, it's super good. I really like it. I pray you can open your Bible with me so you can put your eyes on it. It says that that physical training has some benefits. I'll read from the New International Version. Physical training is of some value, but godliness, what is godliness? You doing a kingdom fast is a godly activity. Has value for what? All things. Wow, did you see that? This fast you did will bring value, will add value to your life. The New Living Translation says physical training is good. But training for godliness is much better. Hmm. Glory to God. The latter part is holding promise or benefit for both the present life and the life to come. That's the benefit of a fast. A kingdom fast will be you benefit from a kingdom fast in this life and in the life to come. The new living says that promising benefits in this life and the life to come. Let's look at what the contemporary version says. Or let's look amplify before we go. For well, physical training is of some value, but godliness, spiritual training, that's right, that's a better word. Godliness or spiritual training is of value in everything and in every way. That's what it first does. It's a comprehensive benefit package. Think it whole promise for the present life and the life to come. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Amazing. You want to see those tremendous physical benefits and the world uh, and in the lives to come, in the life to come, engage yourself in spiritual activities. And one of these, those, one of those spiritual activities is the one we're talking about. Fasting, kingdom fasting. I'm going to repeat myself, explaining what a kingdom fast is, what the difference between just staying without food and praying and a kingdom fast. A kingdom fast goes beyond staying without food. If you remember, we have been saying and defining a kingdom fast or self-denial as not only staying without food, but stepping out to be a blessing, sharing the food you ought to be eating with other people, Clothing those that need clothes. Making sure you stand for justice. It's a whole package. And I pray that you have followed the series so that we don't have to explain in detail what a kingdom fast is. The next point, benefit. Restoration of everything. Restoration of everything. Now, this same scripture gives us the idea that a kingdom fast would do what? It will benefit, you will have the benefit in every area of your life. What is a great example? Mordecai and Esther. 
Look at what happened to them in, in chapter 8 and chapter 10. Restoration of everything. I dare to say, I've defined God's kind of restoration many times. I want to define it again. God's restoration is not you, you somebody took your surplus and then God comes back and gives you a pair of surplus. No. God's restoration is Somebody took your surplus. God comes back and gives you brand two brand new surplus or ten brand new surplus, depending on how many you want. It's always better than the before. Where is that in the Bible? We've seen Esther. Number two, when man fell in the garden, man fell before the fall of man. God was not inside of man. God came to visit man. But when man was restored, he made man a son. Oh, glory to God. He made man his the temple, he lived temp, uh, permanently in the temple called man. What about the fact that you're a child of God, you're a temple of God, you're doing the life of the child of God, and you get to a point in life where you're not seeing results that are God kind. You want to take a fire and say, Lord, restore me. Restore me. We saw so many examples in the morning when we look at the when. You, you do a uh, self-denial when you do it fast. We will not go back to that. All we want to say here is say it clearly that the benefit of a kingdom fast is in this life and in the life to come. And we read First Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. The next we said was a restoration. It brings about the restoration of everything. Everything, not one thing. Everything. Number two. A kingdom fast is a platform for the making of kingdom giants. I hope somebody is listening. It is a platform for the making of kingdom giants. What do you mean by that? I mean, if you want to be enlisted, you are in the kingdom already. But you want to be a giant. You want to be the one. That devils will not just slap you every day anyhow. Engage in a fast. Look at this. Why is a fast the making of kingdom giants? Number one, because in a fast, you will be revealed how to become a giant. Why is it a platform for the making of kingdom giants? In a fast, you will not just have the knowledge. You'll be given power. You'll be given authority to function. Yes, God has already given us power to function. But you and I can tell that there are some times, there are some seasons, or there are some situations we are not able to conquer. There are people that you tell them to do a three-day fast, they will tell you upright, outright, upfront, you're on your own. Why? Because food is still a God. They worship Jesus, but food still makes decisions for them. Decisions for them. On this platform of fasting, you have authority in Christ, then you gain power. To exhibit that authority. Authority over what? Negative situations. Oh, authority over what? Over your flesh. I am of the opinion that Mordecai and Esther, this was not their first time using fasting. I believe that this is how Mordecai, a Jew, became a gatekeeper. Miss Emma, how do you know? When he was faced with this situation, he didn't go for any other approach. He went to what he believed worked. Family fasting works. It is truly a game changer. It is truly a platform for the making of kingdom giants. He did not think twice. He said, ah, this is what we have. Okay, I know what is going to work. I know the right key for this door. I know the right solution for this problem. And guess what he did? Straight to fasting. That tells us that he understands that when you make fasting a lifestyle, your life will be a star for people to follow. You want to be a model for others. Make fasting your lifestyle. You will not struggle. It is the truth. And now remember, we're not talking about a religious fast. Why is it that somebody, somebody says, why is that fast? Did you do a kingdom fast or you did a traditional religious fast? You see the way they responded with a fast and the result they got. It would tell you that these two wonderful examples understood that fasting is a platform 
child of God, kingdom citizen, use your keys. You will benefit a lot when you develop a mindset. The fasting as a lifestyle. The next, number four, benefit of fasting. We saw a little bit of it in the morning. Favor. Have you wondered what favor really is? My God, favor is like those in the world who say it's charm. Favor works. Look at what happened. We're going to go a little deeper into favor because this is a real deal. It is in chapter 8 and 10 where you see favor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Immediately, the property that belongs to Haman was given to Esther. Esther took it hand to Mordecai. The king is giving the same ring he had given to him, he's giving it to Mordecai. You go to chapter 10, they say people loved, you know, before they loved, um, um, the king loved um, Esther. People loved Esther. But in chapter 10, did you hear what they said? The whole country, the whole city loved Mordecai. What is the meaning of that? It, it, it simply is very evident. It's evident. That when you take a fast, you gain favor, not only with God, but also with man. Favor is a game changer. Favor can change things for you. One man of God said, it matters who like you in this kingdom. It's true. Doors can be knocked open like that through favor. How will they get favor without a fast? The fire step, you and I know how they triggered the favor. We study the whole week. There's nothing like favor and fair. Favor is fair. There's something you do to trigger favor. Show me one example in the Bible of somebody who got favor just like that. Yes, the magnitude of what they get is not compared to what they did. That's why we call it favor, but they did something. There's something you have to do to trigger favor. And I want to prophesy over you. You that has fasted this weekend, receive favor in the name of Jesus. Receive supernatural favor like they did in the name of Jesus. Was there a door that had to be opened? Was there a door that needs to be opened, but the enemy is blocking, it's closing it, it's standing on the way? We decree and declare that by your standing and fasting this weekend, receive your favor. Your trigger of a fast has released that favor in the name of Jesus. We saw in the afternoon in the morning, we saw the spirit, the, the, the message before this one that when you pass, what's another benefit? The national level of justice, advocacy. You want to be great? Can I tell you the truth? Greatness is not from the vacuum. You have to solve a problem. We have so many benefits I want us to look at, but I'm going to be really squeezing them so we can undo. Uh, uh, justice to the teaching. What is justice? Meaning we can't finish it. There's so many benefits. We can only look at many as we can in this particular study. But I tell you, there's so many benefits. Look at the national justice we saw in the morning. Do you believe it? That by yourself, you can stand for your nation and the Lord will do something. You can and something can shift. Nations are in captivity because the human beings that the Lord has created and called them nations are quiet. Do you know in your nation, you are a nation? You are a nation. And if the nation you live in is in tumor, you can stand, pray, and the benefit will be what? Salvation for the nation. If you pray for your friend, would the Lord answer? Yes. You are a nation and you are in a nation. If you pray for that nation, would daddy respond? Yes. But one nation is praying for another nation. So what's the benefit? The benefit is national liberation is possible when somebody who knows that they are a nation stands and pray for that nation. Well, I think, no, no, no. Um, what is his name? He already gave that 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 excuse. He said, "Me, I'm the least in my father." So please, that's not what we're looking for here. You're a mighty man of valor. We already made that decision. It's history. 
all of this your argument and talk about I am the least in my that's not that he has already said in a book of people. You are a peculiar people, you are a nation, you are a royal priesthood. He said it. you want to believe that. We also said looking at it this same point in the morning, we're looking at you the praying, why right? showing that when you see injustice, pray. Now we're looking at the benefit. You know, before people were like, oh, if Papa Abraham just asked for one person to stand in the gap, the prayer was answered. In the book of Ezekiel, you know Ezekiel comes after Genesis. It's in Genesis. Don't forget that it's in Genesis. When they were like, oh, can I will Papa Abraham say, if you find five righteous people, if you find no, he didn't come to five, he ended at ten. People are like, if he came to five, maybe not, and his own family could have saved that whole city. Father God comes now in the book of Ezekiel. He says it. He says, I'm looking for a man to stand in the gap. So what are we saying? We're saying that when you stand in the knowledge of the fact that you are a nation, you stand in the knowledge of the fact that God is looking for one person for that from that nation. Guess what? He will do. You're hearing these things because that nation is in your hand. You're hearing this because you're a nation builder. You're hearing this thing because you... you you are destined to do through your prayers things that will change that nation. And one of the most outstanding things you can do is prayer. Okay, Miss Ima, I was born in Jamaica, but I'm in the US. It doesn't matter. There's no limitation in the spirit realm. Oh, I live in Ghana, and the Lord has given me authority over the nations of the world. How can I pray for the nations of the world while I'm in Ghana? The God that created you knew that you're going to come through Ghana. He's not limited in knowledge. If he's telling you, I've called you for the nation. Now, let me say something you might disagree with me, but if you do, leave a message below and we'll talk about it. And for those of, who are listening, those of you who are listening to me, you can leave a comment in, in, the, in the chat box and I'll answer the question. Do you know you can be born in Ghana with your ministry fees in the U.S.? Do you know you can be born in Japan, but your ministry field is in Africa? Many people think being a missionary means you have to pack your bags and go there. Yes, that's part of it. But you can sit in your country of birth. Ah, le sucra balianda. In the spirit realm, you arrange things. In the country where your influence is expected and needed the most. Child of God, die empty. Do your assignment to the most. Leave this world rejoicing. What are some of the things that limit people from taking steps like what we just described? Fear. Fear of what man will say. Fear of who am I? You're looking at yourself instead of the God that created the world. Your own daddy created the whole world. He gives you permission to take care of Ghana. One village. One, um, not one village. One country in the galaxy. It looks almost insignificant. That's the God that he's talking to. He's talking with you about. He lowered himself to talk with us one on one. Don't limit what he can do in your life and through your life. The next point benefit of a kingdom fast. We're going to transition into the book of Isaiah 58. Powerful book. You want to know what a kingdom fast looks like? Study the book of Isaiah 58. I pray it will open to you like it's open to us. If he doesn't keep knocking, we've knocked at this chapter for years and finally it's open. Look at the benefit. Reading from verse 8. It says, Your salvation will come like the dawn and your wound will heal quickly. Your goodness will lead you forward. Let's look at the new international version. Then your life will break forth like the dawn and your healing. You see what we said? This was in part one the benefit of a kingdom fast or the benefit of self-denial part one. We said that and reading through it, but we'll look at a few more that we didn't touch in part one. It's in your healing will be quick. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your God. My God, God is your God. Ha, ah, believe this, believe it. Then you will call. It's not a God for everyone, for the one that fasts the way he prescribed here in Isaiah 68. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. Again, we've seen this in Benefit 1. I'm just reading through it so we can pick up from where we ended. You will cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression and all these other things that we already saw. Verse 10.
the first part talks about what to do or what to when to know you need to stand in the gap. Say, when you spend your life on, on behalf of the poor, we already saw that in the one in the message before this one, need of oppression, standing in the gap, like we just explained, then your light, look at the next benefit, then your light shall shine in the dark place and your night will become like the noonday. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What is this benefit? Number what? Number one, two, three, four, five, six. Number seven, benefit number seven. Your light, your light means your own life. This is not guidance now. This is you. This is you making impact. The benefit of a kingdom fast is that it positions you to make impact. Create impact in your generation. Then your light will rise in darkness. They'll, they'll be like, wait, wait a minute. Where is, this, where is this preacher coming from? Where is this woman coming from? Why is this woman teaching with so much authority and bone? What? This man is so young, but his wisdom is deep. Ah, your wisdom is deep. Because you understood there are some things you can do. And life, it, it, it will look like you're eating life with a man of God, you're eating life with your, with your 10 fingers. You're just eating a chip. These are, these are deep mysteries. It's right here, open up for us. And your night will become like the new day. My God, talk about a beautiful life. Verse 11. The Lord will guard you always, always. This is so huge, point eight. The, the Lord will guide you always. We saw this a little bit in the benefits part A, but part B now when you look at the word always, always. He will guide you into what? Everything. He will satisfy your need. I love this part. Satisfy your need in a sun scorched land. This is recession, is depression, is what? There's COVID. We are forever grateful for the COVID vaccine. Forever grateful. Why? Because he satisfied us. He guided us. He showed us that this thing is deadly. As far as the view family is concerned, it is history. We said it. We said that it is history. Oh, I thought he was saying it's history for the world. No, it was history for us. Do you realize that now? It was history for us. How many of us came close contact? One of us that is a nurse, their direct one-on-one -on -one died from COVID. But they, were, they couldn't. They are here in the land of the living. Many of us, few of us, your, 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 your supervisor on the left, your supervisor on the right, our children go to school. Why? A son scotch season but we are preserved he satisfies us with life and will strengthen your frame you will be like a watered garden like a spring whose water never fails hey what a benefit what a package what a package for doing what staying without food denying yourself some pleasures so you can clot those that are naked so you can Make sure those who don't have houses can have a place to stay. You, you, you make sure that if there's injustice, you stand and you say, no, your family members are in need. You step in and say, here I am. Look at the little things that you need to do and look at the benefits. We said it in benefit of uh, uh, part one, that the seed compared to the habit is always small. I'm repeating myself. But look at what you're going to get for doing a kingdom fast. It's too large. It goes back to what Jesus was telling the woman at the way. He said, God is a giver. That is always looking to give. He's always looking to provide. Hallelujah. Verse 12. I'm not counting the benefits anymore. I'm just giving them now. You can do the counting, please. He said, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins. When he talks about your people, who is that? For the real nation. Meaning people in this ministry, people in this assignment will build something. It's not a coincidence that we are called build. It's not. We are rebuilders and we will build cities. Ah, did you see that? Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the old age foundation. Let's look at another one. What does the king say? 
and they shall be of thee, mean among us, shall be people that build the old waste places. Now let's look at this. As a family, as a mother, as a father, when you fast, one of the things you would do is you position your children to be builders and not destroyers. You will be a builder and your generation will build. What are they going to build? Things that will hurt others? No. What's the point of having money like um, Haman and build gallons to hang people? That's not the kind of building this is talking about. No. Talking about building lives. Talking about building people. Building destiny. Hallelujah. That's the benefit of somebody that fast. When you have the mindset of a kingdom citizen and you do this one lifestyle, fasting, this is what will happen with you. It says they will raise the old age foundation. They will be called repairers of broken walls, restorers of streets with dwellings. My goodness, I just want to keep going because it's so good. Verse 13. There's, a, there's an assignment and then there's a benefit. The assignment is to keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath, from doing as you please on my holy days. If you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day, humbly, honorably, honorably. And if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speak idle words, we already saw that, what to do when you are denying yourself. That was the second message we looked at this. Look at verse 14, that's where we're going, which is the last point for tonight. You will, ha ha ha. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Look at what the new international version says. Then you will find your joy. You will find your joy in the Lord. What is another benefit of a kingdom fast? Your joy will be refused. You will find joy. You can also look at it on that when to get a fast. If your joy level is dropping, get a fast. Lord, refuel my joy. Go out there and be a blessing to somebody. Give something to somebody. Your joy level will go up. And I will cause you to ride in triumph on the height of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. Means your life will become so sweet and easy. That's the summary. That's what this point is about. Your life will become sweet and easy. And then look at how it ends. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now let's take this benefit back to the book of Esther. Do you see that Esther and Mordecai got all of these benefits? What are the benefits? Is Ima, their life broke forth. They were not struggling to lead the people. The people were at their command. They revealed things. Instead of gallons that were built, killed, right, just people, um, decree that was sent to kill people that were not supposed to be killed. Guess what? It was changed. The decree was changed. Why? Because somebody did the right path. Do you see that these people truly experienced what was written in this book of Isaiah? If they did, they got the benefit. I know you're going to get the benefit as well. I know the benefit has been released upon you, your family, your lineage, your generation as well in the name of Jesus. They revealed the ancient room, they revealed the foundation. There was a restoration of life. There was life on the streets again. They were happy once more. That's what happened when they fasted. And that's what is happening as you are fasting or you have fasted. Look at verse 14. Did their joy increase? Of course. We talk about the queen and the king. Do you think their marriage experienced a new level of love and joy in that palace? Yes, definitely. Mordecai, do you think his life, he had more of joy in his life than when Haman was at the gate? Definitely, yes. Did he try it? Yes. He said you will, you, that it will cause you to write it, write in triumph on the height of the land. Do you think, you saw it, he became the number one. He went, you see the Bible, see the Bible. It opens up just like that. He did. The inheritance of Jacob, his father. He will be the head. He was the head. 
Why? Because he did the fast and he did the fast right. He was not fasting for self-benefit. He was fasting to see that justice was given to the people that deserved it. And do it. the benefits that we're seeing right here in Isaiah 58 is what they got. I love the last sentence. It says, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. You know, that translation says, the Lord has spoken. What does that mean to us? What is the meaning of this? That is telling every time you hear it, his name is the Lord. He never changed. The truth of the matter is what this means is because it is God's decision. It doesn't matter the dispensation you were born in. It doesn't matter the season you were born in. If you make up your mind to do it, fasting has not expired. Fasting is not of the Old Testament. There is a difference in the application, but fasting is still a very big requirement that will benefit anyone, any age, anywhere in the world that will choose to apply the principles that will lend this to this end. Father, I pray that everyone that was part of this fast, everyone that is listening to me, everyone that would decide to make a decision after listening to this spirit to take a fast, Lord, I pray that the same benefit will be released over their life, but that the ease that you gave us to go through this fast, Lord, may be upon them. I pray for the mindset of I perish, I perish, that will be released, oh Lord, over their lives as well, that they will realize at the end that they did not perish, but they had so many benefits, so many benefits, there was so much release to them instead of death. We thank you for this weekend, thank you for the shift, the shifts that you have done in our life. I pray that everyone that's listening and do the same, experience the same shift. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. With so many benefits to a fast, when you fast, you gain so much. Do it and enjoy the benefits. In Jesus' name.